Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. So today we're looking at some bleeding edge functionality that was just added to the Godot 3 game engine, and that is 2D skeletal deformation. Now do keep in mind, this is only in the development master branch right now, so that has a couple of ramifications. First off, if you want to follow at home, you have to build from source code right now. Second, obviously expect some changes to happen. This is fairly early in the process. And third, expect some warts and or bugs, again, early in the developmental process. Now what is 2D skeletal deformation? Well, basically you take a uh, polygonal shape, you apply a texture to it and then you could deform it using a sequence of bones. Uh, if you've ever used cutout animation tools, sprite or spine creature, any of those tools, you'll have a pretty good idea of what this is. And if you haven't got any clue what I'm talking about, don't worry, I will be showing you post haste. Now, um, there is a post up on the Godot website describing this process, but instead I'm going to show you in video form, but I will put this link in the description down below. So without further ado, let's jump into our scene. Right now you see a standard straightforward scene. We've got a blank node and we've got a image to use. And now what we need to do is go ahead and create a polygon 2D. This is the outlining uh, polygon that's going to control our surface, plus it is host to our texture. And that's the first thing we need to do. So basically grab your texture and drop it into the texture slot like so. So now we're good to go. We are in our polygon mesh. We're going to go into UV mode right here with polygon 2D selected. Hit UV and there you will see a very familiar shape. And now what we want to do is in polygon mode, click this little plus icon and now we want to basically just define the outline or shape of our polygon. I'm doing this very rough obviously so we're going to cut off and truncate some edges. So you're going to want to be as accurate to your surface as possible. Oops, that was me twitching a bit. but So this isn't going to look perfect but also isn't going to take forever for me to do. Like so. So obviously you'd want to add more points to get it to more accurate to what you want, but that's the gist of what we want to do. And then you see there, there is our surface defined by the polygon 2D. So we have a bounding shape to work with. We have some uh, textures in our shape to work with. Then we're going to go back in here, back to the UV section. And what we're going to want to do is put splits in those. So this is where our bone structure is going to control. We're going to basically turn this into a bunch of uh, sharper polygon surfaces. So I'm just going to come in here into splits mode like so. We want to be in, and then we just grab one point Two point. Okay, so one point, two point. And we just kind of want to split it up into a bunch of polygons. And these basically are the points where our bones are going to deform. All right, my mouse hand is twitchy for some reason. And you can obviously add more detail as you need it, but that should give us a pretty good surface to work with. Uh, we could also do one vertical, but I'm not gonna bother. Okay, so that should work out pretty good. So now we've got our polygon ready to work with. Now we need to go ahead and create the bone structure that's gonna manipulate it. So not as a child, but instead at the same level as a peer to polygon 2D, we're gonna go ahead and create a skeleton 2D. Like so, and there's not really much involved with the skeleton 2D. I don't even know if you need to know if you need to place it, but I do. I place it where my root bone is ultimately gonna be. And then the Skeleton 2D pretty much just does that. What it is all about, though, is the children. So we're going to create bone 2Ds. First, create a root bone, like so. And this is going to be off where your skeleton started. And then as a child to it, create another bone. So another bone 2D, like so. And then just move it up. And I'm going to create really, really simple on this one. So as a child of that bone, Create another bone 2D, and let's move it up. So this is a very, very, very simple skeleton we've got going on, but you can get the idea of how it's working. So now what we do with that all done, we go to our polygon, and we go to skeleton, and we assign the skeleton we just created. So like so. And then one last task to do is go to your skeleton, go to the skeleton menu up here, and then say make rest pose from bone. So basically this is the default unanimated, unmodified way that things should work. And we are almost done. The only thing we have left to do now is we need to paint the polygonal weights of our skeleton. Um, to do so, I believe I go back to Polygon, I go to UV, and we switch instead to, um, see, I think it's UV mode. Oh no, bone mode. Yeah, so switch into bone mode. And over here you can say sync bones to polygon. You click that and it gives you all your different bones. So the root bone again is the one that we created down here. Bone two, I should have actually named them better. And then bone three. And now what you're doing is painting the influence. What we're drawing here is the, when you paint something to black, it assigns it to that bone. So like so, I'm gonna go ahead, 
Black is unassigned, white is assigned. So all those now are influenced by this first bone. Now paint the influence of the second bone, like so. And then finally the third bone. You can have interlap, uh, overlap, so paint it on both bones and it will blend between the two bones. So if you have a lot more detail than what I have here, here, I'll paint that guy, that should be overlap. It will now influence across both bones. So that is the process. We have a model now ready to go. And now you can basically just go ahead and animate it. So I could select any bone in the hierarchy. So let's select the topmost bone here. And then when I move it, it deforms the underlying mesh. And then you see how we've got some weirdness going on down here. Well, that's probably because the way I painted the influence. But you can see how it works. And I could come down to the base bone. So I could select bone or the, the final tip bone. So there you can see we could create super deformation. And then we could grab the root bone and it's gonna influence those bottom ones. So I think I should be able to rotate that bone. And then, so we're, I, I, I set up something wrong in my rig for down there, but you get the idea of exactly how it works. So once you've got the things set up, you can now bend and modify and change these bones as you wish and animate accordingly, but you probably wanna fix that thing down there so it doesn't look so screwy. But that is essentially how bones would work. And then you can animate these using the traditional animation systems that are already built into Godot. So you could keyframe the movement of the bones over time and it will modify accordingly. So this is a new way or new mechanism of animating using bones and deformable meshes in the Godot system. But everything nicely plays with Godot. It's all built in so you can uh, manipulate these things programmatically Again, you can keyframe them using the existing animation system. Um, it's some really cool slot in new functionality that wasn't there a day ago. It's amazing the, the speed that Godot is getting new features and functionality. And this is really handy for doing things like, um, say, making a flag wave or a cape wave or um, a tail or, you know, like something that cutout animation doesn't necessarily work great for. Um, this fills in the blanks there and also, um, it should be well supported to um, give additional functionality or better functionality for importers from those other tools I was talking about, um, you know, Sprite or COA tools, etc. They should all be able to get better importing tools that work and integrate more tightly into the Godot functionality because this new functionality is here for them to, to take advantage of. So even if you're using one of those existing tools as part of your workflow, this should ultimately improve them as well. And if you're not using those tools, well, some of this functionality is now built into the Godot 3 engine. It's some pretty cool stuff. I'm not sure if you're interested in using this. Again, it sucks that I missed that one vertex because it's causing some weirdness. But you do get the idea of exactly how this setup and system works. So what do you think? Uh, 2D deformation comes to the Godot 3 engine. Again, are you staggered by how fast these new features are coming? So just last week, I was doing a video on uh, what was CSG geometry that was just added. It's like this whole new realms of functionality being added on a weekly basis. And of course, uh, Godot 3.0.2? or point three, one of those two was just released, finally giving you the ability to export C-sharp code. So some really big developments coming in the world of Godot, and this one, 2D uh, animation, deformation animation, is pretty sweet stuff. Uh, well, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Is this something you're going to use potentially? Is it a little too convoluted, or does it all make sense to you? Um, well, that's it for now. Hope you found it useful. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.